Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is a quick tip lesson. This is part of my quick tip lesson series. There's a link in the description to check out all of the lessons in this series if you want to. In this video, I want to recommend something super cool, especially if you're into song learning and song writing, uh, but it works for any tonal music that we're working on, which is music that comes from scales, which is most of the music that we're working on. What I recommend is that we take any song that we wanna learn ever, any song we've worked on, any song we're practicing, and to gain an understanding of how all the songs we're wanting to learn, listening to, practicing, they all come from the same pool of information. I want us to practice those songs in one key. Choose one key that we're gonna plug everything into, every song that we ever play, just for our own study. It doesn't mean you're gonna perform it in that key, uh, but just for watering it down into what are the chords, what's the melody, and can I just understand it theoretically in this key and play through it in this key. And then what we're doing is we are layering every song on top of each other in this kind of transparent mode. And we can see how they compare to each other and how crazy similar they are, how much more similar they are than, than they are different. By doing this, you are gonna start to see, oh, super interesting. Out of these, all these songs I'm working on, these three go to the four chord at the exact same measure. Or um, I'm working on Hey Jude and I'm working on Don't Think Twice It's All Right. And they both have the one chord of the key turn dominant seven, which is not usually in the key. And right after that, it always goes to the four chord. Or if you're in this key, it's going to the F chord. And I do recommend that you do it in C. Just choose your key as C and you plug everything into that. And if it's a minor key, you do the key of A minor. This is just nice and simple, but you can do it in any key. Choose whatever you want, just stick to that. And of course you can always say, well, I wanna go crazy and, and be so good that I play every song in every key. Great, go for it. But this, but to get the benefit of this, you only need to do it in one key and just choose one and have that be your domain and your playground for, for that level of understanding. Again, you might never play it that way. Um, you might never play it with these simple chords or in that key for your performance or the actual version of the song, but it's making us understand it enough to translate it. And then it's making us do that with everything. So we see how insanely similar uh, they are to each other. So when you do this in whatever key, you really have to know this is the one chord, this is the two chord, this is the three chord, this is the four chord, this is the five chord. You have to know those numbers and uh, think in those terms and then also have at least one scale shape physically that you understand the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six of that scale. And so that's where the melody sits and then the harmony sits with those chords. Um, and it's just, it's powerful. It's really powerful. And the, the next level benefit of this is that once we get fluent at that, and you are so good at thinking in those terms that you can even imagine it on the guitar, whether you hear it clearly or not, or whether you see it clearly or not, whatever, everyone has different kind of levels of that, but just that you can think of the concept or see the fretboard in your mind or hear it or in any anything like that. Um, and then we can start to recognize by ear much more easily what's happening in songs because we just have this limited kind of, again, pool of information that we notice things are coming from. If you do this with 20 songs that you want to learn over time, um, you are going to start to see, well, for my taste or for my repertoire, or for this genre, like, wow, these same things are happening over and over again, which is going to give you a way to identify what that is. And then when you're listening to music, you're much more likely for it to trigger you and say, oh, that's that thing where the four chord turns minor and goes to the one chord. Because interesting, in these five songs I'm working on, every time there's a major chord that just turns minor, it's always on F. It's always on the four chord. It always goes like, oh, that's a specific thing in music. It has a specific flavor to it. And I'm not saying this automatically just makes us be able to hear it, but it increases those chances. And if we intentionally listen to music with the curiosity of, oh, there was a chord change there. I wonder, maybe it didn't jump out at us. We are like, oh, was that the sixth chord? Was that the two chord? Well, we have, a reference point now to think in our mind was that that's A minor space, was this this D minor space. Now it might not be in that key. If you have perfect pitch, this, this might not apply to it all, but for everybody else, for all of us that don't have perfect pitch, which is most people, um, this is very, very uh, powerful. You can hear something early in the day and, and think, oh, was that three, two, one, five, three, two, one, five, was that melody that? I'm thinking that because I have an actual image in my mind of where to guess that it might be happening. And then hours later, you can 
go home and test it out and say, oh yeah, it sounds like that, even if it wasn't in a different key. Uh, so very powerful stuff. Um, if you don't quite know your chord numbers and your open string chords like I was talking about, um, I have a chord chart called Chords with Color. It has a ton of ways to take advantage of that chord chart, but one of them is just that it does show um, just the open string chords through C and through several other keys, plus some um, other chord types in those keys, like if you add sevens to them and whatnot. So very good resource. There's a link in the description to grab that, or you can go to chordswithcolor.com. In my next lesson in this series, I'm going to share a technique for how to work on getting something faster if we're working on needing to play something faster or we just want to have some speed technique. Uh, there's one particular exercise to do. I'm going to share that next week. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.